welcome to the second module of uh, the fourth week. We are looking at uh, coupled oscillations and this will be in some sense part two of the uh, coupled oscillations. And as usual before we uh, go ahead, let us quickly um, recap what we have been saying. By coupled oscillations, we mean coupling together several particles. So, you can think of it as uh, like several particles coupled by a spring for instance, but in reality you really do not need a spring or any such physical object to couple objects together. It is enough if potentials interact. We looked at um, this example of two pendula coupled together by a spring of uh, spring constant k. The new thing that is entering uh, the picture is that when you disturb one of the particles in this system, the other one is automatically going to get the disturbance sooner or later. So, both will start uh, oscillating. So, you cannot treat one of them in isolation without considering the other. So, in other words, what we have is a total system which is made up of say two particles like we have it here in the slide or maybe it has some large number of n particles. In either case, you cannot treat it as n individual particles. It has to be treated in its totality. And what we did was to write down equations of motion for each of these particles. So, we said that um, uh, the displacement of the first particle be called x and the displacement of the second particle be called y and we wrote down the equations of motion corresponding to each one of this. So, in general we assume that x is greater than y and we have these two equations of motion written together and as usual we have identified this g by l, g is the acceleration due to gravity and L is um, this quantity which is the length of the string in the pendula. Omega 0 square which is like the natural frequency of the individual system is G by L. Now, with this the trick we did was to add the two equations and subtract the two equations. And when we added the two equations and subtracted the two equations, we went to a new set of uh, equations and to be able to do that, all we did was to go from um, let us say this coordinate system which is described by x comma y to a coordinate system which will be described by u comma v. And the actual transformation was that u is x plus y and v is x minus y. So, when you do this transformation, uh, what you will see is that this particular set of two equations will transform into these two sets of equations. Okay. And as you can see, these two equations are now independent equations in the sense that the equation for u does not involve v and the equation for v does not involve u. So, it is like the one dimensional oscillator equation of motion that we saw earlier. So, we can straight away write down the frequencies. So, in the first for the first case the frequency was this we did this identification and for the second case the frequency is given by this. So, given uh, these two equations of motion, we can straight away write down the solution because we have dealt with this uh, in uh, the very first uh, week itself. The solutions are simply uh, sin or cosine functions and in this case, I will simply choose to use cosine function. So, I have written down the uh, solutions here and there are these two frequencies omega 1 and uh, omega 2 and omega 1 is related to um, omega 0. So, omega 1 square will be omega 0 square whereas uh, 
omega 2 square will be omega 0 square plus 2 k by m and phi 1 and phi 2 are the two phases. To go further I am going to uh, make some uh, choices for the amplitudes and the phases. So, let me take uh, the amplitudes u 0 and v 0 to be simply equal to 2 times a. So, I just want to make the amplitudes equal so that it makes uh, analysis easier and also again for the same reason I will also take uh, phi 1 and phi 2 to be equal to uh, 0 in which case uh, these solutions would become u of t is 2 a times cos omega 1 t and v of t is 2 a times cos omega 2 into t. So, if you remember uh, we had said that uh, u is equal to x plus y and v is equal to x minus y and from this I can write an expression for x and y. Um, x will be equal to half into u plus v and y will be equal to half multiplied by u minus v. So, let me substitute uh, these two expressions in this expression for x and y in which case I will get the following. I have these uh, two expressions for x and y as a function of uh, time and um, so 2 can be cancelled uh, throughout. Um, so, uh, x will simply be equal to a into cos omega 1 t plus cos omega 2 t. So, if I simplify it x of t would simply be equal to cos omega 1 t plus cos omega 2 t and similarly I will get another expression for y which will be cos omega 1 t minus cos omega 2 t. Now, we can use the cos a plus b and cos a minus b formula and uh, let us see uh, based on using that formula what kind of uh, uh, dynamics we can interpret out of this. So, using cos a plus cos b formula or the trigonometric identity I would get the following relation and I can write a similar expression for y of t uh, which will give me the following result. So, now we have expression for if you remember x and y are simply the displacements of the first and the second pendula. So, finally, I have managed to get the expressions for the displacement of each of those pendula this and this. We should plot both of them together and see what uh, it reveals. These look like the kind of expression we obtain for the case of uh, the beats uh, phenomena. So, there is one component which is going to be a fast oscillation especially if we make the assumption that omega 1 and omega 2 are nearly equal to one another omega 1 plus omega 2 be much greater than omega 2 minus omega 1. So, if I assume that omega 1 is approximately equal to omega 2 in such a case omega 2 plus omega 1 will be much greater than omega 2 minus omega 1. So, with that assumption put in uh, we would get what would look like uh, beads. So, let us sketch that the fast oscillation would correspond to the higher frequency omega 1 plus omega 2 by 2 and the slower oscillation which is shown in red would correspond to omega 2 minus omega 1 by 2. So, if you look at the y oscillation again it has a, a component which is faster which is um, omega 1 plus omega 2 by 2 and there is the slower there is the slower uh, oscillation which is given 
by this uh, red profile which will be omega 1 minus omega 2 by 2. Now, what you will see as interesting is when you compare the displacements of x and y side by side, you will notice that at this point when the displacement of the x oscillator is nearly 0, the y oscillator precisely at the same time has maximum amplitude oscillations. In other words, when you physically translate it, it is equivalent to saying that you have given energy to this uh, system of two pendula connected by a spring and you set it to oscillations. What is going to happen is there will be times when one of the oscillator, let us say uh, this one is going to show you zero displacement. Essentially, it is going to remain at its equilibrium position and at precisely the same time, the y oscillator is going to show large amplitude. Okay. And that is not the end of the story, it is going to go further and at some other time x oscillator is going to have um, larger amplitude somewhere let us say here and precisely at the same time the y oscillator is going to have 0 amplitude or 0 displacement. So, the totality of the picture is as follows. So, both of them are set to oscillations and at some point when the x oscillator has 0 displacement, y oscillator has maximum displacement and conversely when x oscillator has maximum displacement, y oscillator has 0 displacement. Now, you can imagine what does it mean to say that the displacement is 0, the particle is not oscillating at all. And in that case, you could also verify that the velocity would be 0. So, which means that the kinetic energy of the particle at that point is also 0. So, at these blue points, the energy of one of the oscillators, in this case the x oscillator is nearly 0 and the y oscillator has all the energy. So, initially you gave energy to both of them but a point in time has come when x oscillator has nearly 0 energy, but y oscillator has all the energy. But at a later instant in time, what you see is that if you look at the uh, red points here and, and the red point here, you notice that now all the energy is with the x oscillator and the y oscillator does not have energy. So, this scenario is going to repeat itself in time again and again. So, the energy is going to keep shuttling between one oscillator to the other and back to the first oscillator and uh, so on. When we finally wrote down the equations for these two systems in terms of the transformed coordinate system, that is these two equations, they are exactly like the one dimensional oscillator equations that we had seen much earlier on and that is the case for which we argued that since there is no mechanism to dissipate energy, energy is not lost, energy is a constant of motion. So, here the same story applies okay, that the total energy is still a constant, but it keeps moving between the first oscillator and the second and back to first oscillator and uh, so on. In the first uh, set of equations where we describe these coupled oscillators in terms of x y coordinate system and the second one we just use the transform coordinate systems in terms of uh, u and v. So, if you look at it from the perspective of u and v oscillator, the energies cannot keep shuttling between the u and the v oscillator because u and v are two independent oscillators, they do not interact with one another. That is what we see when we look at these two equations. Again remember that each one of them is like an independent one dimensional harmonic oscillator, their frequencies are different. So, u is an independent oscillator, v is another independent oscillator, whatever energy you initially put in in u and v will remain in u and v modes uh, forever. Okay. So, let us write down 
all these uh, consequences. The two new coordinates that we wrote down u and v would be called the normal coordinates or normal modes and as we had already seen these new coordinates u and v are related to the old coordinates x, x and y. The difference being that in the x and y coordinate system the two oscillators are coupled but in u and v they are uncoupled. So, uh, we need to it is a special coordinate system we will give a name for that. So, u and v together would be called normal uh, coordinates or u of t and v of t would be called normal modes or the pattern of oscillation given by u of t and v of t would be the normal modes. And similarly, we also saw that there were two frequencies one associated with the u mode and the other associated with uh, v mode. So, the two frequencies are omega 1 and omega 2 corresponding to u and v mode and these two are called normal frequencies or normal mode frequencies and these frequencies are clearly different from the frequencies of the one dimensional oscillator. So, in this case uh, it, ha it so happens that uh, u 1 mode or one of the modes corresponds to uh, the frequency of one individual pendulum and the second one of course takes into account the presence of the uh, spring in between the two pendula. And I can associate let us say energy E 1 with the u mode or let me call it E u and energy E v with the v mode. Total energy of the entire system will not be a function of time and the constant value would be E u plus E v. On the other hand, I can uh, do the same thing with x, x and y mode as well. So, E x and E y would be the total energy which would, which would be a constant, but very crucially each of this E x and E y themselves would not be constant. E x would be a function of time and E y would be a function of time, but the sum of E x and E y would be a constant independent of time. Whereas, when you look at it from the point of view of the normal modes and their associated energies, again let me repeat the associated energies being E u and E v, each of them is a constant and the total energy is also a constant. So, in the normal mode coordinate system there is no uh, interchange of energy between the two modes, each one acts like an independent uh, oscillator. You will realize that our method of analysis is dependent on being able to see that by adding and subtracting the two equations of motion, we were clearly able to take coupled equations of motion into two uncoupled equations of motion. That was the trick that we employed. Now, it is not clear that if I write out more complicated, uh, I mean if I analyze more uh, complicated uh, coupled systems this trick would always work. So, we need to find a general uh, way of dealing with such coupled system and uh, this is what we will do in the next module.